What is up, Moment Family? It's your boy, Joshua Martin. Today, we're going to talk about the iPhone 12 Pro and my hands-on experience and thoughts and a little bit behind the scenes of the recent cinematic film we posted on our channel. If you haven't watched it, make sure to do that. All what up, dude? What's good? What are you working on? Try and get this uh, cinematic iPhone 12 Pro video going. We got the girls <laughs> under a blanket. <laughs> it was cold. Uh, yeah, so today's mission. This is day one of Joshua shooting his film. And we're out here in the van, of in course, van. giving him his classic moment initiation. Uh, we got to do a van trip, kind of hang out, and uh, we're going to go up to the mountain. So should be fun. Now to preface, I'm coming from an iPhone XR and jumping to the Pro was a massive difference. Um, already I was excited for having three different lenses, the wide, ultra wide, and the tele. And they all improved in terms of how um, the aperture is. They all are much larger than previous versions, I believe. So that was very exciting to, to actually get my hands on and see for myself. Now the new design of the iPhone 12 Pro is quite nice. I like the chamfered edges, it's more boxy. Now, one thing I was actually disappointed in was the battery life. Uh, I did have to charge it multiple times because we were shooting almost countless hours throughout the day. Hey, what's what's? Hey, can you show me what's powering your phone right now? Because you're shooting so much. <laughs> get a little product. Let's get to the briefcase. A little out. product placement right here. Oh, this dude. This is the Zen Zenger. The Zenger. Zenger charger. Let me get a close up. John's a tank. This thing's a tank, but it's so good. USB C. Yeah, USB C. Charges a laptop? Charges a laptop, yeah. right? And granted, yes, the screen is always on, sometimes in full brightness because I had to see what it is, but it drained a lot quicker than I would imagine. But we were shooting at a higher bit rate. Um, in the Moment app, you can change the bit rate and how high, so we had that at the max. So that was probably one of the reasons we're just really pushing that phone to get the most quality out of it. The image quality, obviously, is a huge selling point for this phone. Dolby Vision 10-bit HDR, that is a lot. But we'll actually get into why we didn't use HDR. First yeah, thoughts like on that, that dynamic range? It's actually very impressive. Like we're the, the horse was in shade, and you still saw like blue sky. Oh, I should look at the camera. <laughs> I'm oh, like, no, look at you. I don't care. <laughs> uh, we still like blue sky still, and then we had the cine blue one here, so it's giving that little 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 mm. little cream. Dude, I mean, as cinematic as possible. New gold flare anamorphic with cine bloom on the iPhone 12 Pro. It looks really mm. good. Really? Oh my god, those colors. <laughs> look at that. Oh. That's very haunting, actually, the more I look at that. Spooky. What's up? Okay, I got a serious question. For you. Yeah. When is it okay for me to call you Tay Tay? You can do that right now. <laughs> Wait, hey, what was that? Hey, Tay Tay. Hey, hey, it's Tay Tay. Oh, I wanted to know when can I call Taylor Tay Tay? <laughs> it's been like. Itching now. Okay. Now. Okay. now is it good? If I, like, if I cut that with like another match cut, wrapping around something. Now referring back to the cinematic film, if you watched it, you know we're featuring our gold anamorphic. And I mainly use it on the wide and the telly because it can be used on both. So on the wide end, you get more of a an 18 mil-ish field of view. Uh, with the distortion on the side and everything and these very gold anamorphic flares now on the tele end it's a lot more cropped and less distortion obviously because you're on a tighter lens but um, still has those same characteristics and i feel like the anamorphic flares were just a little bit more present with the tele <laughs> joshua don't get pooped on now I saw this question a lot in the comments of the video, did we use HDR? And the answer is no. A uh, couple reasons why. One, using HDR in the iPhone, you had to be tethered to the native app. And there are some cons of using the native app. One, since we're shooting anamorphic, I couldn't de-squeeze <laughs> squeeze. <laughs> I couldn't de-squeeze the image to have proper composition, 
uh, framing, all those things. Two, I didn't have real control over my exposure. I couldn't drag the shutter like you saw some examples in the film. I couldn't quickly change the variable frame rates. I shot in 48 frames a second and 60 frames a second. I could quickly do that with the MoMA app versus the native app. But for kicks and giggles, I did shoot a little bit of clips with the HDR. And the HDR is actually very interesting. It reminds me a lot of how ProRes RAW works. Um, what I mean by that, if you have an HDR file and you drop it into your standard timeline, of course, this is not the proper way. You would want to have an HDR timeline, but in this case, I just dropped it in. Um, it looks extremely bad. It looks overexposed and that's fine. Don't worry, because uh, when you go to your color control in Final Cut Pro, you just bring the highlights down and you're back to normal, sort of. You still have to watch the highlights because again, you're shooting on an iPhone, much more smaller sensor, but you do have that control where you can bring back all the information and it looks really good. All right, so starting with the optics, we have our gold flare anamorphic mounted on the uh, stubble ring for the 67, and then that has the cine bloom as well as the variable ND, so we can just control that shutter and it's light all around. This is mounted to the Movi gimbal. This thing is actually my first time using it. And it's kind of sweet. My favorite feature is the barrel roll. So we're just trying to get a lot of those different types of shots. Yeah, and the reason, the one of the main reasons why we're using the Movi on this because uh, it can support a lot of weight. Yeah. So the weight of the filters, two filters stacked to each other, plus the lens, um, their counterweight is fully maxed out actually. Yeah. So, um, and yet yeah, this is the, obviously the filter, the 67 mil filter adapter and yeah. I did want to implement motion blur just because it makes it a little bit more visual interesting in my opinion, uh, especially with night shots because it can get a little bit too static um, and to infuse some type of life or energy or emotion, um, I wanted to drag my shutter. Now, when we say drag our shutter, it simply just means we're pulling down the shutter speed um, lower than what is recommended when filming. So if you're filming at you know 24 frames a second, you wanna be double your frame rate. In this case, we're dragging that below uh, 1 13th of a second, 1 10th of a second, and that just allows in much more light. So you have to bring your ISO down to compensate and this allows more light to kind of pass and string along. So you have these long light streams, um, which can imply motion, uh, especially if you're going towards something like the shot in the tunnel, uh, all the lights kind of swirling past. And now you can change that speed in your edit if you just remap, retime it basically. So you can make it faster, you can make it shorter, so it can feel like it's choppier or more smoother. So it all depends what you want. So you have more flexibility afterwards and post when dragging your shutter like this. I like that technique and I hope you guys appreciate it too. The iPhone just keeps getting better and better each year. Um, now, can you tell the difference from like an iPhone 8 to, to now in terms of video quality? Maybe some difference, but it's not major. So do you need to upgrade to this? Probably not. But having this new technology just pushes things forward. And I think that's exciting to see. 10-bit Dolby HDR in a small phone that can that can fit in your pocket. That's, that's kind of crazy. Um, but it's exciting to see that. Uh, will I be shooting on it? More, more than likely I will if I need something in a pinch. Will I pick it over a cinema camera? No, I wouldn't. Um, but it's, it is fun to see and just have a tool that's capable of things to create. Uh, so there's really no limit and, and it just should be encouraging for anyone who's out there who wants to get into filmmaking or even photography that you can start with your phone. That's really encouraging. I think that's the takeaway from this whole video anyway. That running. Final thoughts on the iPhone 12 maybe and now that the video's up? Or your weekend in Seattle? Yo, this was fantastic. You guys are awesome. I just have to say thank you for everything, and I look forward to everything we're going to create moving forward. <laughs> Dude, thank you for sending it so hard. Boom. True initiation. See you soon. Let's do it.